Let's talk about drop caps, enlarged caps, and the things that you can now do with a CSS property called initial letter. Graphic design uses a lot of enlarged caps. Really the job of a drop cap or an enlarged cap is to catch people's eye and show them where the text begins. I've been advocating for a lot of different new interesting graphic design layouts, different kinds of layouts now that we have tools like CSS Grid. And when I do, a lot of people think, well, you don't want to break user experience. We don't want to go too far. I agree. We don't want to go too far. Sometimes subtle changes can really have a profound effect and brighten up your the feeling of your design, give it more interest, bring people in a little bit more, let them focus better. But one of the things we can do to avoid confusion or avoid frustration with user experience as we do make changes to our layout is use drop caps the way that they're used in magazines, which is when maybe the layout is a little bit unusual and people aren't really sure where to first start, where to go in order to start reading an article, for example, you can use a drop cap to mark it really clearly where they should start. People will know what that means because they're used to magazines. People know how to flip through a magazine and see which page is actually the page where the article starts and to go right to where it is, no matter where that is in the spread of the magazine. So we don't need to train people how to do that on the web. They're going to do that naturally. We can just start using drop caps for this particular job. I think it's interesting to think about drop caps in that way because we it's almost like we haven't known what to do with them on the web and we've just been doing using them as a kind of a decoration, um, which is fine. They do convey a sense of um, polish or maybe a little bit more seriousness or it's a way to convey quality in journalism or quality in writing by having that kind of styling on a piece. Uh, but I also think that even when you're not looking for that kind of feeling from the art direction, there might be a good use for drop caps to help guide people's eye and let them know where they should start reading. Here we can see some examples of drop caps on the web. We have been trying to do this for many years. The hard thing about the old techniques we had was that really you would grab a hold of the letter by using the pseudo element first letter, but then you had to make it bigger by using font size, the tech only technology we had by floating it to the right and just hoping that it kind of lined up. But because web browsers each render font size a little bit differently, often it might work in one browser where the drop cap would line up beautifully with the bottom edge of one line of text. But then you'd open another browser and the drop cap was like a little bit too tall or a little bit too small and it didn't really line up. I see things like that all the time. Here are three examples. All, they happen to all be from mobile designs, but it happens whether the page is wide or narrow. I like the one on the right, the intercept, because it's almost like they said, yeah, we know it's not going to line up, so let's just create a big extra space. We'll call it art, and we won't even try to line it up. But now that we have this new CSS property, we can start to have it things line up very accurately. So here's how it works. We use the pseudo element first letter to target the particular letter that we want to go after. And then we use this property called initial letter with a value that's a number like initial letter four. And that basically tells the browser, hey, I want you to take that letter and just make it the size of four lines of text. And that way, if the font doesn't download or the user enlarges their font or there's something else about the way the page renders that's not what you expected as the person who wrote the CSS, it's going to work out fine. It's always going to be the height of four lines of regular text, which is the entire point. Uh, right now, this only works in Safari, and so you need the WebKit prefix in order to use it, but you can use it today, and maybe 12% of the market will get it. So here's another example. One other thing that initial letter can do, you can have two numbers where you say initial letter four, which means I want the cap or the character to be the height of four lines of text, or the width if you're in a vertical writing direction, but I want it to stick up and only overlap by one line. So you can see here, this C is the height of four lines of text, but it only overlaps one line. And we could say four two, and it would overlap two lines, but be the height of four lines of text. You could say five three, in which case it would be the height of five, but it would only overlap three lines of text. There's some variations of things you can do to mess around with that. 
Here's another example that I put together. I put some padding on this particular character and I put a border around it as well as some margin just to give it a nice little box to stick in. The character itself is the height of four lines of text, initial letter four, but the total box is there's some more stuff going on and we'll be, you know, that's done here manually a little bit with some padding and some margin. You do have to think through the progressive enhancement and I have a video more about this and progressive enhancement I actually use this as an example. Um, you don't want to just rely on typical techniques of uh, overrides and fallbacks because of CSS air handling because um, the other kinds of styling you might be applying is going to get applied. So you're going to want to wrap up any sort of set of CSS that's a for styling a drop cap in a feature query, which I also explained in the other video. Um, and that will give you the opportunity to deliver a really beautifully sized perfect drop cap to the browsers that have support for initial letter. Well, meanwhile, just doing the normal thing with no drop cap for all of the other browsers. Ship this today. Even if a tiny fraction of your users have support for this, it'll be a nice detail for them. Everybody else will get it slowly over time as other browsers catch up. Uh, I know we're working on this for Firefox. It should be coming out sometime later this year, into next year. At some point, we're definitely going to ship support for this. Uh, so it is going to be a bigger and bigger thing. Initial letter, check it out. Right now, the WebKit implementation does have a few bugs. Not that it's broken, but more that there's things that initial letter is supposed to do that it doesn't do yet. So you can go ahead and make the letter bigger. In the future, we'll be able to apply a different font, maybe some sort of fancy wood carved letter or you can kind of handle the graphic design more. Right now it doesn't do those things, but right now we can just do this sort of simple use case very beautifully uh, and let our users see drop caps, help them find the beginning of the text, initial letter, try it out.